Hi, in this video we're going to explore some of the variable types that you can use in the Kotlin language. This video is part of a series of learning how to build mobile applications. In this section, we are learning the syntax of Kotlin. So what we have on the screen in front of us is the IntelliJ IDE where we can write Kotlin code and it will execute in a command line environment. If you want to see how to install this, then watch the previous video. If you already know how to use Kotlin and you want to jump directly into mobile application development, then check my channel out. I'll give you a link to the first uh, applications that we're building. But right now we're assuming that you might not be familiar with the Kotlin language. And so we're going to take you through a series of videos that will show you some of the features. We'll do this very quickly. And if you want to type along, I'll give you some information in the comments section below where you can get the code for these ex exercises. Okay, so the first project we're going to work on is this one here called variables, but I'm not going to just show it to you. I'm going to build it with you. And so we're going to start by making a new project. So you can see that I'm going to call this thing variables. And since I already have something called variables, uh, I'm going to name this one variables two. We're going to choose the Kotlin language. We're going to use the Gradle manager. And you can see that on this computer, I have uh, the Java development kit at version 17. And so in previous videos, we installed something slightly different on Windows, but I hardly use Windows. Uh, I prefer to use my Macintosh. But uh, as far as running the syntax of the language, there'll be absolutely no difference. So I created a folder, created a name, and choose create. Okay, so it looks like the project is up and running. And let's see, I don't want to see any more tips. Let's just test this out with a little green triangle to see what shows up. There should be a hello world message right down here. So that means everything is running. All right, so now we're ready to start exploring the use of variables. And you can see that uh, I've changed the font size. Hopefully that'll make it easier for you to watch. So the first thing I'm going to do is just highlight everything in this section and delete it. So we're still going to have function main, which is an important name, and then all the stuff inside here is where we're going to do our editing. Okay, so to make this fast, I'm just going to paste in some code. Let's see what I just typed. So the first thing I typed is the word var, which is a key word to tell us that this is a variable. And this means that it can change. The age is my variable. That's a type of an integer, and I am setting it to be 34. So I'd be 34 years old. So an integer cannot be a decimal. So if I tried to make it 34.9, you're going to see that we have an error that says, can't do that. What you typed in to me was a double. So we're starting off with something simple, like an integers. The next thing I want to do is print it. And so you can see when you print, you're going to use a special character called a dollar sign, which is going to tell this to interpret the value of age. And then age is going to change. So it's going to become 35 and print it again. So pretty simple app. Let's run it. And you can see that the output says age is 34 and now age is 35. So there's another option. When you're working with variables, you're also gonna see values. So VAL and VAR are used very frequently. Now what happens when I change the age from a var type to a val type? Well, values don't change. And so down here we have a new error that says vals cannot be reassigned. Would you like to change this to a var? And so if I say, I'll take the suggestion, it switches it back to a var. Now, can you understand why a val would not work in this situation, but a var does? The reason why is because you can see we're taking age and giving it an assignment. We're going to reassign it down here. And if you want to reassign a variable, it has to be declared here as a var. And so that's a first step there of understanding variables in Kotlin. Now I'm going to paste some more code in here. So let's put in something called a val of intelligence. So this time the intelligence of this person is 145. And you can see the syntax says, make this an int. And when I want to print it off, I do the same thing again. So I put in a dollar sign and then the variable name. So if you forget to put in the word int, and just delete that, it will still work it will know that intelligence is supposed to be an int. And when I hover over the variable name, you can see that it says int on it. So even though I didn't tell it that this is an integer, the fact that it was given an integer as 145 
means that it knows that it's an integer. What happens if I changed it to a decimal? So 145.5, what does that do? So I go to intelligence now, and you can see that it automatically defined it as a double. So integers are whole numbers, and decimals are doubles. There's also a variable called a float, which we will explore later. But doubles and integers are the two common types of numbers that you'll deal with. So we've got ourselves another one called personality rating, which is also a double, and we print both of them. So let's leave this as an integer and run it. So now the output shows intelligence is 145 and personality is a 9.3. All right, let's, do, let's talk about some strings now. So a string is a word. If I paste this in, you can see that I have a new variable called name. And it puts my name in here. Doesn't know how to spell Sluter, it looks like. So now if I want to know what type of variable this is and hover it, you can see that it says name is a string. So a string is any kind of characters that fit between quotation marks. What I put here is a comment. So double slash means it's going to actually ignore everything I write here. It's only a comment for the programmer. Now, I'm also going to redefine the name. So you can see down here that the name now includes my full name, and then I print it. Let's see what we get there. So is it going to print Shad Sluter, or is it going to print Shad David Sluter? Make your bets. Let's see what happens. And let's see what it says. It is saying Shad David Sluter. So the last assignment wins. So initially, it did not have the word David in it, but now it does. Now related to strings is something called a char. So let's paste in some new code. So I'm going to create a variable called second letter, and you can see that I explicitly said that this is of type char. So a char is a single letter. And I'm going to take the name and get the first position of that name. So if this whole thing is a string of chars, then what is position one for my letters? Is it going to be the letter S? Or in the case of counting, starting at zero, it's going to pick the second letter in the list. So it should be an H. A second way to get that is to type in name.get and tell it which position you're looking for. Either one of these will work. So for right now, I'm just going to comment this out. And we're going to say the second letter of your name is the variable called second letter. And let's see if it prints an H. Let's see, it does right there. It says your second letter is an H. If I were to change that to a zero and run it again, we should get the first letter of my name, which is S. Okay, so now I'm going to comment out the, uh, the second part here. And uh, we're going to now get the second letter using a different operator called get. Let's see what that does and you can see that it produces the letter H. Same results, two different functions. As a matter of fact, you can see that there's a squiggly underline that says, this isn't really the real way that you should be doing this. So you'll be getting suggestions from IntelliJ whenever you're writing code, and you should look at them. Sometimes they're the right thing to do. So like here, it says, would you like to replace the get call with an indexing operator? I have no idea what that is right now, right? No one's taught me what an index is, but I'm going to choose it. And you can see that an indexing operator is what I was using before. So this is the preferred method. This, so it says, take the string and the square brackets say, find the letter at position one. So I'm going to do control Z to bring it back. Those are both equivalent then. Pick the one you like better. All right, so let's go on to another type. I'm going to paste in some code. This time I have a variable that says is human. So var is human is equal to true. So the implied data type here, if we hover, is called a Boolean. So Booleans are true false statements or ones or zeros, either one. So if I typed in the data type here with a colon and Boolean, it will work exactly the same way. So this is optional. So I'm going to ask, uh, am I human? So name is human, question mark. And then I'm going to print off the variable called is human. Let's see if it runs. And so right now it says is true. The second thing down here says, give me a sum. So age and intelligence is going to take these two variables, age and intelligence, and add them together. And you can see that I have a 180. OK, 
Okay, pasting in some more code down below, I'm going to have uh, something with an integer and something with a double. So let's take the comments out here and reapply them. So age and personality is going to be an integer variable. So what I'm demonstrating here is that we have an error. You can see that when you're typing and you get something underscored in red, that means there's a problem. So it says there's a type mismatch. So I've told it that age, intel, and personality is a variable of type integer. And it doesn't like that. Age is an integer, intelligence is an integer, but personality rating, I believe I defined up above as a decimal number. So yes, it is a 9.3. So you can't add three numbers unless they all agree this has to be either uh, converted into an integer or the entire result has to be a double. So let's put the comments back and take these comments off and you'll see that this version says that age, intel, and personality are now defined as a double and it is possible to add two integers plus a double and the result will be assigned as a double. Let's see what the uh, results are when we print them. So that'll tell us that down here, the Intel age and personality is a decimal number. It is 189.3. And so the result is not an integer anymore, but it is a double. In the next video, I'm going to take you into this uh, item here called converting number types. So how to convert from integers and floats and decimals and all of the types of things that will cause errors in your program. So if you want to continue learning how to become a software developer, stick with me and you can join me in class here at YouTube or on my website at studycoding.org. We'll see you in the next video.